Welcome Math 140 students to page 15, section 2.5. So for our warm-up, we want to translate the following sentence. 6 less than twice x into an algebraic expression. So here, when we have our less than, well, that tells us that we are going to have subtraction. So that's going to be a subtraction. Now, the weird thing about this is that whatever comes behind it is actually going to go in front of the parentheses because less than tells us to reverse the order. So here, twice x, well, twice x, there's x, and twice that would be my 2x. And here, what you're going to be subtracting is going to be what's in front of the word less than, which is going to be 6. So now, changing it to an algebraic expression, I really know that I just have 2x minus 6. And it's an expression because it does not have an equal sign. Now, for number 2, it says to convert 4.5% into a decimal. So I know that every single percent is out of 100. So I can think of this as the number 4.5% out of 100. So 4.5 divided by 100 is going to give you a 0 0.045. Another way you could have thought of this is if you have a 4.5% if you move the decimal over two times, you end up with a point zero four five, which is exactly what we had before when we divided by 100. Now, if I want to change 0 0.6 into a percent, then that means I'm going to move the decimal over two times this way. So that is going to give me that this is going to represent 60%. So 0.6 gets represented as a 60%. For number one, it says normal yearly snowfall at the local ski resort is 12 inches from that, from then twice the amount it received last season. The normal yearly snowfall is 62 inches. What was the snowfall last season at the ski resort? So we specifically want to know what was the snowfall last season at the ski resort. So that is what we're trying to figure out. I don't know how much that was. But I know that every year it should be about 62 inches. So we have that normal yearly snowfall. You can expect it at about 62 inches. And it said in that first sentence, it specifically said that normal yearly snowfall at this local ski resort is 12 inches from then twice the amount it received last season. So from that's going to represent our subtraction. And what are you subtracting from? Twice the amount it received last season. So twice the amount so two times So since I have that subtraction of 12, I know I'm going to have a subtract 12, and it says twice the amount it received last season. So we have my 2x minus 12. So for last season, I'm going to have that this is going to be 12 inches from 
am twice that that's normal. Um, well, what's normal is going to be my 62. So this is how I'm going to figure this out. I know that my equation is going to be 2x minus 12 and what I know the value for x is going to be 62. So I have 2 times my x minus my 12 and what I'm plugging in is going to be my 62. So when I plug this into my calculator, I have two parentheses, 62 minus 12. So two times 62 minus 12 gives me a total of 112. So 112 inches is the amount of snowfall last season at the ski resort. For number 2, it says the sum of 7 times the number in 8 is 36. Find the number. Well, here that word is, I know, represents is equal. So equals, and well, what number does this equal? It looks like it's going to be equal to 36. So all of that is equal to 36. So now I'm going to have to kind of dissect that first sign to, that first left-hand side of the equation, the sum of 7 times a number and 8. So I know that sum, I'm thinking about addition. So I'm going to be adding two things together. So I don't know what the first thing is, and I don't know what the second thing is, but I'm going to be adding them together. So the sum of 7 times a number. So 7 times a number, well, I don't know what that number is. So let's call it x. So I have 7x is one of the things I'm going to be adding. And the next thing that I'm going to be adding is 8. So I really have 7x plus 8 is equal to 36. So if I want to find the number, I need to subtract by 8 on each side. So now I have 36 minus 8 is going to give me 28. From there, divide by 7. And I get that x is equal to 4. So my number is 4. Now for number 3, it says find three consecutive integers whose sum is negative 54. So if I'm thinking about consecutive integers, integers that means one after another. So if you're thinking about it visually, let's think about the number line. So if I have the number line, let's say I get from 2 to 3 to 4 to 5 to 6, right? That's just part of the number line. It's not all of it, but it's just a little snapshot of it. So if I start at some random integer, how do I get to the next integer? Let's say this is x. Well, what would I represent that 3 as? Well, I would represent it as x plus 1. Now, let's say I want to get to 4, but the only thing I knew was a 2. Well, to get to 4, I'd have to go 1, 2 places over. So now I have my first, my second, and my third number. So first number is x. My second 
number is an x plus 1. My third number would be an x plus 2. So I want to find three consecutive integers whose sum is negative 54. Well, I know that whenever I have the word sum, that means to add all of my things together. So I'm going to add things together. So I'm going to have my x plus the x plus 1 plus that third number, which is that x plus 2. And remember, all of that is, which is going to equal to a negative 54. So when I add the x's together, I have x plus x plus x plus 1 plus 2 is equal to a negative 54. All I did here was make it so that all the x's are grouped together so I can count that I have three x's plus three is a negative 54. From there, I'm going to subtract three from both sides so that I can have three x and negative 54 minus three is a negative 57. So I will divide by 3 on both sides. So negative 57 divided by a positive 3 gives me a negative 19. So that is going to be my first number. So the integers are, well, x was equal to a negative 19. That second number, which was x plus 1, well, if I have negative 19 plus 1, that gives me a negative 18. And if I had my x plus 2, well, it really just is negative 19 plus 2, which is going to give me a negative 17. So I have negative 19, negative 18, and negative 17 as the three consecutive integers who add up to a negative 54. And now we have some practice problems. So whenever we have practice problems, this is where I want the student, you, um, to go ahead and try these problems on your own. So please press pause and work these problems out. And when you're ready to see the answer, then play the video back. So go ahead and press pause. So for number one, we have Gary buying textbooks and notebooks. And hopefully you work this problem out and we get a total of 17 notebooks. For number two, we translate that into a, into a math equation and we solve for it, and that number is x is equal to three. For number three, we're finding three consecutive integers who add up to 120, so those numbers are going to be 39, 40, and 41. Now on page 18, in algebra, it is easiest if we just translate English sentences into algebraic equations and solve the equations. Be sure to change the given percent into a decimal before you use it in the equation. So it says, what number is 45% of 84? So what number? I don't know what that number is, so let's call that x. Well, I know that is is equal to a equal sign. And we have 45% and of in mathematics tells us to multiply. So we are going to multiply that number 84. But remember, it specifically says to if you, be sure to change the given percent into a decimal. So since it's given to me as a percent, 45%, I need to change that into a decimal. So that 84 is still there, but if I have a 45% to change it into a decimal, it's going to be a 0.45. So now I have that x is equal to a 0.45 times 84, and that gives you a 37.8. For number two, it says 8.5% of what amount is 
So I have my 8.5%. I know that of is going to tell me to multiply. And my is is my equal sign. And it's equal to 476. And what amount? I don't know that amount. So let's call that x. And remember, because it's a percentage, we're going to change it into a decimal. So that's a 0 0.085 times x is equal to a 476. So I'm going to divide by 0 0.085 on both sides. So on my calculator, 4.76 divided by a 0 0.085 gives me 56. So the amount, and it's given to me in dollars, is going to be 56. For number three, I have 168 is, so that's my equals, and it says what percent? So the percent is unknown, but since I have the word of, that tells me to multiply. And so I'm going to be multiplying by 112. So now I have 168 is equal to my 112, and let x here represent the percent. So I'm going to divide by 112 from both sides. So 168 divided by 112 gives me 1.5. And remember, you wanted to write x as a percent. So to write it as a percent, I would move the decimal over. So 150% is going to be your answer. And you know it's going to be more than 100% because 168 is definitely bigger than your 112. So it's more than 100%. In fact, it's 150% more. So almost. 150%. Now we have some practice problems on page 19. So this is where you, the student, are going to work these problems out. So go ahead and press pause and work these problems out and then replay when you have the answers that you want to check. So hopefully you guys have worked out those problems. Uh, so for number four I got 36 and for number five the 50 grams of protein is the recommended daily amount that we found. Now, to change gears a little bit, uh, sometimes you're going to want to find the percent change. So that change is going to equal the amount, the new amount, minus your original amount. It is important to talk about how much an amount has increased or decreased over a certain period of time. This increase or decrease is generally expressed as the percent and called the percent change. For example, find the percent change. In 2011, the IRS increased the deductible miles, mileage cost to 55.5 cents from 51 cents. So we want to know how much the change was. So from the equation below, we know how to calculate the change to the new amount minus my original amount. Well, we know that the original amount is 51 cents since it's from 51. So now I'm left to find my new amount. Well, I know that my new amount is 55.5. So I know that my change is going to come from 55.5 minus 51, 
which gives me a 4.5. So that is going to be the change. But it specifically is asking me to find the percent change. Well, I'm going to have the change over the original. So that is going to give me a 4.5 over my original amount, which was 51. So that I would have 4.5 divided by 51, which is a 0 0.08. Eight two three five two nine four one, and if I'm changing this decimal into a percentage, then it would be an eight point eight two three five percent. It depends on where you want to round to. And now you have this practice problem. A grocery store reduced the price of a loaf of a bread from 280 to 273. Find the percent change. So I know that my change is going to come from the new amount minus my original amount. So my new amount is 273. Now I'm going to subtract my original amount, which is 280. So I go between 273 minus 280, which gives me a negative 0.07. So it went down in price, right? It reduced the price. So that's why I have a negative. So here, to find the percent change, I have a 0.07 as the change, right? And out of my original amount, and that original amount was 280. And that's going to give me a 0.025. And if I move my decimal over two times, that gives me a 2.5%. That is the percent change. Now, we're going to talk about um, the discount and markup formulas, but I didn't actually give you any homework in this section with markup and discount formulas. They're here mostly for your practice, okay? But something that I definitely do want to go over is going to be going over simple interest. And if the amount of money P called the principal is invested or borrowed for a period of T years at an annual interest rate R, the interest, the amount of interest I is earned or paid is I is equal to P times R times T. So for example, Amelia invested a principal amount of 950 in her bank account that earned a simple interest at an interest rate of 3%. How much interest did she earn in five years? Well, I know that I'm using this formula. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down. I is equal to my P times my R times my T. Now I have to make use of all of my variables. So I know that I have my principal amount of 950. So that tells me that my P is equal to a 950. Then it says that I have my interest rate of 3%. So interest is equal to 3%. But remember, you want to write interest as a decimal, so it should be a 0 0.03. And sorry, that should have been your rate, right? Interest rate. I should have paid attention to my variables. There you go, yeah. A rate is always given to you as a decimal, and it definitely says the interest rate, okay? Because it specifically says how much interest did she earn. So the interest is what you don't know.
that's what you're trying to figure out. And the cool thing about this is that it does give you your time. It says five years, which tells you that your T is equal to five. So you have your interest, which is unknown. You have your principal of amount, which is your 950. You have your rate that you wrote as a decimal, 0 0.03. And you have your time of five. So now you just multiply those three numbers together. 950 times 0 0.03 times five gives you 142.5. The amount of interest that you are going to earn is $142.50. Why? Because you round to the nearest cent. And whenever I'm talking about money, that's going to be two decimal places. So we have this practice problem, but I'll go ahead and do this with you. It says Yolanda let her sister five thousand dollars to help buy to help her buy a house. So she let her borrow five thousand dollars to help her buy a house. In three years, the sister paid five thousand plus nine hundred dollar interest. What was the rate of simple interest? Well, I know that formula is I is equal to P times R times T. And if I have that five thousand that was going to be my principal amount. And it specifically said that they paid $900 in interest. So the interest is equal to 900. So what you're trying to figure out is the rate. I don't know how much the rate is. That is what you are trying to figure out. So the interest I know is 900. It's equal to that principal amount, which is that 5,000. The rate is what you're trying to figure out. And it did give it to you in three years. So three is equal to my time. So I really have 900 is equal to that 5,000 times three times R. So if I have 5,000 times 3, you get 15,000 times your R. So you are going to divide both sides by that 15,000. So when you have 900 divided by 15,000, you get a 0.06. So your rate is a 0.06, which represents a 6% interest for your rate. All right, and that is the end of section 2.5. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to email me.